everybody, it's Chugga Conroy. Welcome back to more Pokemon White version. Last time, we took on Lenora, the Nacreen City Gym Leader, and won ourselves the incredibly boring sounding Basic Badge. Our victory was a little bit short lived beyond just the badge name because then we witnessed Team Plasma stealing some bones from the museum. So we can't let them get away with that. We're gonna have to go chase down some old bones. This time, I waited all the way to daytime to begin chasing after them because I'm just that effective of a hero. And now I'm delaying things even further by going into the Pokemon Center because that's just the kind of completionist that I am. We've won another badge. And as such, we wanna check in with the top clerk at the Mart. Problem is, he doesn't actually have a single new item for us. So great usage of our time, right? Actually, kind of. I'm very overdue on talking about this. I never personally do this on my own time that much, at least not anymore, but if you buy 10 or more regular Pokeballs from this clerk, he will throw in a bonus, a Premier Ball. This is just simply an all white Pokeball, doesn't have any special bonus effects whatsoever. It's basically just getting a buy 10, get one free. I don't really like it, but for those of you that like taking advantage of that offer as soon as possible, I'm sure you've been mentally screaming at me for the last several hours of gameplay, and for that, I am sorry. I know how that feels. Next, um, after we won our gym badge, we got a new item. The Dowsing Mekin. Dowsing Mekon? I don't know. I'm gonna check this little checkbox next to our key item, something that I could have done a little while ago, but just haven't really had the need to. Once you've done that, you can tap Y and instantly bring up any key item. It's pretty nice registering items to your quick slots like that, and it's very instantaneous. Mine isn't reacting because, like a stupid seasoned player, I accidentally grabbed the Ultra Ball that was in this spot already out of force of habit. I know. How dare I know this game so well that I do that out of force of habit? Really? Okay, no, I'm not meaning to pat myself on the back too much. It's, it's a pretty memorable secret that if you found it once, you probably remember it, but I was trying to save it for showing just how good of an item this was, and I realized, oh crap, I probably shouldn't have grabbed that as early as I did. So there you go, showing it to you now. Now, let's actually do what we're supposed to. This leads to Pinwheel Forest. If they manage to scuttle off into the forest, we might have trouble. Sounds like you're already bracing for the worst case scenario there, Berg. You just going off into the forest, assuming that's where they've already gone, and you're probably right. I mean, just listen to this music. Well, you see, there are two ways out of Pinwheel Forest. The road that goes straight, and the path that winds through the woods. I will take the straight road after them. If they're not there, I'll block the exit. Would you please take the other way and check whether Team Plasma is hiding in there somewhere? You'll run into a lot of trainers, but it's basically a single path, so I'm sure you won't get lost. Come on, let's do it for this for, for Lenora's sake. Stumbling over my words right there. We could chase after him, but we're gonna have to fight like five trainers on the way up there, all for him just to tell us to turn back around, so I hope you'll take my word for it, because I've done it before. Starting off, we got a double battle. I bet Team Plasma didn't have to fight them. One, two, one, two, keep time with the other, and a one-two punch. What we, dis uh, we discussed what to do before a battle. Was that your uh, strategic conversation? Perhaps I heard something you didn't want me hearing. Ah, see, I knew that there were gonna be two of you. Mayo and May. <laughs> okay, I already thought that May and Max were a pretty, like, you know, that'd be a pretty bad duel of names to have as twins, and kids would probably make fun of you in school for it, though. Who names their kid after a jar of mayonnaise and then gives their twin a perfectly normal name? I'm sorry to anyone that actually has that name yet again, but hopefully you will be as cool about it as all the Hilberts that I offended <laughs> who were actually not really that offended after all. I don't know. Uh, so these Sawaddle. Remember when I said that I've raised a, um, a uh, Panseer before as a serious team member and its Incinerate didn't even do half of the HP when I was getting times six damage? These Sawaddles were it. I was higher level than them too. It was really awful. I just, uh, it was really bad. But um, I guess on the note of Sawaddle, um, I don't really want to get into the encounters quite yet. I just want to stop for a moment to say how cute Sawaddle is. If you've never seen it sleeping, here you go. You deserve to see something that cute someday in your life. And it's just, it's so, so adorable. Uh, it's also, a, the, that little hood of leaf, of uh, that little leaf hood that it's wearing also, it's implied that its mother makes that for it when she's incubating the eggs, and it's just, uh, it's such a cute little Pokemon. It's hands down one of my favorites of all time. Definitely one of the cutest. Two of us keeping time together. Ah! <laughs> I guess they got that twin connection going on right down to when they scream at you. We could, s oh no, we can't skip past this guy. I was about to say we could skip by him though, but I don't really want to. You stubborn brat. When I'm through with you, you won't be able to chase us anymore. Whoa, slow down there, buddy. Uh, that's what we call child abuse. 
I mean, you're kind of already guilty of animal abuse and theft, but let's not... You know, they, they always say, like, if you're gonna do something, don't do it armed. I, I'm getting very sidetracked and too philosophical on this guy. Um, how about we now get started on talking about the encounters that we can get in the inner pinwheel forest, because there's a lot of them, and a lot of goodies. Starting this off especially, can we take Pinwheel Forest to appreciate how great the early bug types are here? Wow, a caterpillar cocoon family that is not useless after the very start. That grass bug type is immediately the biggest hurdle. It's awful defensively and it's difficult to slot into a team roster. But if you can just get past that one big negative, the combination of grass and bug same type attack bonus is an amazing offense. If you don't believe me, it starts with Bug Bite and Razor Leaf at only level 15. It's good to go out of the box and cover so many types right away. It evolves soon and you're not far off from being able to do a trick that makes happiness evolutions instant, so don't worry about it needing happiness to evolve fully. It's a decent sweeper with decent stats all around, and both of its abilities complement this well. Leave the ability choice to just whatever other Pokemon you're using it with. Personally, I think you're gonna pick Swarm regardless though. Also, it gets Leaf Blade, X Scissor, and Swords Dance naturally. This epitomizes hard to use, but darn powerful when you know what you're doing. And you know what else? There is another great Larva Cocoon family, and it's the very next encounter, Venipede. Okay, so this one's not quite as great out of the box, mainly attacking with Poison Sting in pursuit, but it does get Poison Tail and Bug Bite soon. Both pretty respectable moves. This is the more speed-focused cousin of Sawaddle who is more attack-focused. Something unique is that its evolved form Whirlipede is easily one of the best tanks that you could have right now. So if you're in need of a temporary tanky Pokemon, it can serve as your tank right now and then become a fast sweeper at a later point after you've gotten a tank that you're holding out for. I like Swarm the best of its abilities, but the other one is not useless by any means when it's meant to take some physical hits. Now to get to the downsides of Venipede. All it learns are bug, poison, and normal type moves until it's fully evolved. It may not seem like it has much variety in its moves, but once fully evolved, that all changes and it learns tons of real hits. Not even just through TMs either. It has exclusive access to Steamroller, which is a 65 power physical bug type move with a 30% chance to flinch. On a Pokemon this fast, chances to flinch that are that high are dang good. This is just another Pokemon that adds to my ever-growing love for the underrated poison type. Now that we're done gushing about how amazing Venipede and Sawaddle are, we're gonna move on to something a bit cuter. Cottony. Get Prankster, seriously. <laughs> just as simple as that. It gives priority to moves like Charm, Tailwind, the Powder moves, and especially so, Cotton Guard, a move that not many Pokemon learn but raises defense by a whopping three stages. It has some great speed going for it, but giving outright priority to these moves makes it so much more useful in battle than it would be without it. That's sadly about where the positives for Cottony end. It's a status inflictor more than anything else. I really liked Cottony in concept, and I even wanted to use it for a little while, but it's hard to recommend in this context, because a lot of what makes Cottony great comes up in later games. We're coming up on the Sunstone, it needs to evolve pretty soon, but it needs to reach the absolutely disgusting level of 37 as a Cottony, just to gain access to Cotton Guard. Until then, its stats are pretty awful and it's hard to use. It's yet another case of the stats and moves that await you if you're able to survive the grind are very rewarding, but the grind is just so long that I feel like your time could be better spent raising pretty much anything else, and it's a shame, because Cottony definitely has potential and it's very cute looking. Its evolved form Whimsicott can be found in the rustling grass around here, but despite starting with higher stats, I don't recommend it since, again, most of its best moves can only be learned as a Cottony. And as you would expect, because we're just going over counterparts one after another, we're moving on to Petalil. This Pokemon does one thing. Sleep Powder, Quiver Dance, Spam Petal Dance with own tempo, and then Giga Drain when it needs to heal. Okay, so that's four things, but you know what I'm saying! This might sound awful, but hear me out on this one. It comes with Sleep Powder, and it will have no shortage of good Grass-type moves coming in until it fills out with that one good move set I just mentioned. Giga Drain is a great move that it gets early on due to some buffs that it received in black and white. It now has 10 PP instead of the old 5, and it has higher base power. 
you can rely on it in battle far more often than previously. Pedal Dance might not be available until very late, but to get this moveset put together, you want to evolve Pedalil at level 26 or 27. No later, and that's a lot better than what Cottony has to deal with. It's the epitome of a one-trick pony that does its job well, but is held back by its bad type coverage because it only learns grass and normal type moves, with the exception of Dream Eater, which, why would you want to learn that when you have a healing move already that doesn't have to rely on sleep? Once it has that one moveset filled out, it's very powerful and can sweep through whole teams, even just doing neutral damage. Again, its evolved form Lilligant is in rustling grass here, but I recommend catching it as a Petalil for the same reasons as Whimsicott. But that's it! So many wonderful Pokémon just utterly permeating this forest! Uh, happy we got to talk about some of these, because I've been looking forward to talking about how the bug types don't suck. And thank goodness they're not just another bug flying type. Easily my least favorite Pokemon type of all. Just such a commonly overdone thing, and they're not even really good or unique most of the time. Uh, there we got a Chesto Berry, just like the Pokemon breeder that we fought. Rangers will give you a berry when you beat them as well. Says the guy who's been sneaking past trainers, but you understand why. We got an antidote right there. Ha! Sign outside. I didn't need to pack an antidote. The forest spirits gave me one, feeling very bountiful indeed for the traveler that was passing through today. I'm reading way too deep into this. Um, is there is there any point to this little alchemy? I can't walk up here. I can't like go any further to the. Uh, uh, I guess I guess it served the purpose of wasting my repel. So there's at least that. Um, while we were uh, going over the encounters around here, we did get a new item, uh, a couple actually. Tiny Mushroom is a selling item. Again, I recommend holding off on selling it for reasons you'll see in time. And the Big Root boosts the power of HP stealing moves, and like I was saying, with uh, Mega Drain and Giga Drain getting buffed, you might want to consider it for those moves. Oh. Right, I was going to throw up a repel. <laughs> Got sidetracked by explaining things because if you couldn't tell, I like doing that a lot. Uh, let's also... Yes, we have three items from Pickup. Definitely want that. Antidote. <laughs> I really didn't need to remember to pack one. Super potion. And a potion, because I don't have enough of those already. <laughs> Maybe I should actually start using my regular potions and not um, relying on the uh, nurse outside, because I do kind of need to reduce my... Well, I don't really need to. I'm going to have a... Oh, of them already! Wow. I was about to start talking about how this is your first opportunity to catch these guys in the wild and at a pretty competent level, too, but... Yeah, uh, you just had to shift the topic right away very awkwardly and very loudly. They also can be holding berries, um, but uh, more rarely than that, they can hold berries that reduce the type of the move that they're weak to, which is our first time seeing that. You are so weak. Just how did they expect Incinerate to get you through anything? <laughs> if I didn't beat you there and I got critted or something, that would have been funny, but <laughs> yeah. I think, uh, I think we'll switch Duat in. Just because I can't... Uh, no, not item. There I go selecting the wrong item again. And Lillipep got an item in that amount of time. Potion. <laughs> there it is again. Okay, okay. I'll be a man of my word and I'll use them. Another little optimization that I appreciate is that you can now just use multiple of the same item until you run out without having to load up the item that you want to use every single time that you want to use it. It's pretty helpful as a shortcut and just in general makes things a lot quicker. There's the hidden item that we were being told about. I only needed a loose indication to know what it was going to be showing us. Um, I, I, again, I don't really know why I'm bragging. It's pretty obvious. Dead ends usually have items in them, though, so I don't mean to toot my own horn too much. It's just, you know, when you've played enough of this, you kind of catch onto the tropes of where they're hiding the items. I think we can all relate if you've been playing for a while. Yeah, I've made it far. I'll hold you, I'll hold you here so my friends can get away. I'm going to laugh if you only have one Pokemon, just saying. That's kind of something that's going to be happening here in a second. Yay! I get to laugh in your face for... You have a Patrat. Uh, I just... I don't like the Patrat family at all. I, I was kind of saying this a bit when we were fighting Watchog, but... God, it's just... In some stuff, it's all right. It is kind of cute on a couple of Pokemon cards, which... Kudos to those artists that made it actually look cute, because that's an achievement, but... Uh, I don't know, it's just, it's not cute, it's just really creepy looking, and it's not even good, it, uh, I don't know. It's kind of the thing about Univas, I know a lot of people really don't like a lot of Unova Pokemon, and for me it's a little different, um, pretty much for every Pokemon in this deck, either I really, really love them a lot, or I don't like them at all. Patrat belongs to the latter, of course, though, but that's kind of how I feel more than anything. A lot of my favorite Pokemon were introduced in this game, and... I think you can kind of see that not only with the Pokemon that I've been praising, but the ones I've wanted to praise, like P-Dove. Uh, P-Dove. 
Yeah, I'm gonna go down. I know that there's something down there, and we got a ranger in the way. Blend into wilderness and talk to Pokemon with your heart. That is a ranger! I will convey my heart by drawing circles around you. Did you feel my wildness? Uh, I don't think that's something you should be doing while holding a rope and talking to a child. Just saying, buddy. Little bit of life advice there. Uh, okay, I'll keep quiet if you bribe me with this. A peach berry or Pecha Berry is the official pronunciation, even though I think it's kind of wrong because it's based on peaches, but, you know, while you're at it, you might as well call it a pin -at berry instead of a pine -at berry, but that's just me. I'm not the one who decides these pronunciations. I'm just one who's critical of them at times. Um, that heals poison, so once again, pretty useful for an area where we're going to be fighting a fair amount of venipedes. Throw up another repel, and we're going to grab these items that I fought so hard against one Pantsir for. Grass Knot. That is a special grass type move that does more damage based on how heavy the opponent is. Can be rather good. I don't think we can get that down there quite yet, though, so I'm gonna hold off on that. Not like I really have a choice in the matter, kinda goes without saying. And we got another Plasma Grunt. A Pursuer. I'll have you know I gave up on learning Pursuit. I didn't do that. Ooh ha ha A kid like you beat some of us. That can't be helped, but I'll take you on now. Aw, uh, it's cute that you think that you get to count as a boss fight, but I'm not going to be bothered making a sidebar for a Team Plasma Grunt, I'm sorry. Got three Pokemon, though, making you... I was gonna say more impressive than the rest, but I guess we'll go with marginally more impressive than the rest if you're using a Patrat instead. You're probably gonna go down without any sort of... You're probably gonna go down in a mildly delayed manner. Good, okay. It's always really annoying whenever a Pokemon is just detect spamming against you and they get it twi two turns in a row even though the chances are low and then maybe they get it third time in a row and then you barely don't one-shot them when the attack actually gets through and then they do it again next turn and uh, just it delays the inevitable for no good reason. Next at least good for scouting though, but they're not scouting you and these aren't double battles either. Um, I'm a, I guess maybe I'm a little bit hurt by that Intimidate, but it's okay. I got Water Gun, which will probably finish you off anyhow. Special my 31 and special attack IV. There you go. Plasma! If this keeps up, we won't save Pokemon! I'll have you know I liberated Pokemon from bad trainers one time many years ago. Fine, take your stupid skull! Out of context. So, the dream our king had, the dream we had, won't come true. How are you holding up, fellow subject of our king? Gorm of the Seven Sages! I'm mortified that this skull, which we went to such trouble to obtain, was stolen from us so easily! It's not important. We can afford to abandon the dragon skull. According to the results of our research, this is not the legendary Pokémon for which Team Plasma is looking. It's completely unrelated. But we will not allow anyone to disrupt our plans and get away with it. We will fix it so you never interfere with us again. Oh, sweet! The Poke Pokemon were getting all worked up, so here I come, and what do I spy with my little eye? This important-looking guy! Uh, are you here to help your friends? Who am I defeated? <laughs> what a way to break the mood there, Berg! Blair! Berg! The others di didn't have anything. And who are you supposed to be? Is this guy the big boss? I am one of the seven sages of Team Plasma. Getsis, another of the seven sages, will liberate Pokemon with words alone. The remainder of the Seven Sages have ordered their compatriots to take Pokémon with full force. But the odds are a little against us now. To you, the bug Pokémon user Berg and the normal Pokémon user Lenora, I say, know your enemies, know yourself, and you need not fear the result of a hundred battles. This time, we shall retreat quietly. To secure the liberation of Pokémon, we will steal Pokémon from trainers. Even though you are gym leaders, we will not tolerate any further obstruction from you. In any case, we will settle this someday. I hope you are looking forward to that time as much as I. They're a speedy bunch. What are you planning to do, Berg? You gonna chase them? Hmm. We got back the stolen skull, and if we quarter them, there's no telling what they might do. I think I'll be heading back, Lenora. <laughs> 
chicken and out when the going gets rough? Well now, well, I'll be waiting for your challenge at Castelia City's Pokemon Gym. Yes, indeed, I am certainly looking forward to it. Blair, you're holding the Dragon Skull you worked so hard to get back, right? If that had an item description, I never had an opportunity to read it. Blair, thank you so much. With a kind trainer like you taking care of them, the Pokemon with you must be happy. Here is a token of my gratitude. Please use it carefully. A Moonstone! If you were... masochistic enough to go and raise a Muna, then now you can evolve it. This is a Moonstone. Some Pokemon evolve and use this item on them. Now I must take the Dragon Skull back to the museum. See you. Take care of yourself. Bye-bye. Well, with that all done, by just going over here to the right, we have a bit of a ledge. Want to be careful and grab that. Kind of sucks for anybody who answered Snivy to that girl who gives you the whole item back in town. Uh, ouch, I'm very happy that I didn't answer that. Not that I would have benefited from it regardless. Now, um, we have come back to the straight road that Berg was guarding, and uh, this is where we would have ended up had we gone up a little bit. Before moving onward, let us go down a little bit. Hmm, I can feel it. The presence of a fierce Pokemon. You can't feel it two feet over to the left so I can see what you're talking about? Okay, Gramps, uh, maybe you're trying to teach me some kind of lesson in patience or some crap like that, but as a child, I was never very receptive to those lessons, could you tell? <laughs> and, uh, you also don't always face the same direction. You, okay, you're a, you're a spinner or a, a, a turner, rather? Uh, maybe that's your last name? I'm gonna go with that. Also, your dead face with no eyes looks really cute. Why do Pokemon and people stay together? That's the theme of my research. Why do Pokemon and people stay together? I think we stick together because we are different. Man, for all the made-up philosophical crap I was trying to apply to things, that's actually really deep, kid. Uh, kudos to you. Maybe you'll grow up to be a top scientist in Team Plasma one day with words such as that. Uh, I want to go into the grass, and I actually want to catch a wild Pokemon. Again, not for the team, but for another purpose. Petalil! There you are! I promised that I would keep an ear to the ground, or keep an eye out, or do something else with some other body part for that one girl! That sounds even worse than me hitting on my mother somehow! But, uh, yes, I wanted to catch Petalil for her so we could take advantage of that trade. Duat fell asleep, but that's okay, I don't need to worry about that. I don't need to worry about that in order to catch you. How about, um... How about another trend of catching everything in heal balls lately? Let's do another one. One, two, three, click. Since they prefer moist, nutrient-rich soil, the areas where Petalil live are known to be good for growing plants. You don't say forests have lots of plants growing in them, huh? Even though we are going to be trading it away, I want to give it a nickname. A meaningful nickname. Which is why I'm going to sit here on the screen for a week and let you guys name it. No, I, I can't really wait for that. So, uh, let me see. What can I come up with that's so creative? This is why I never let myself name anything. But who knows? Maybe it'll be applicable. Maybe it'll grow into being one of the strongest Pokemon in the entire world. Heck, maybe it'll become number one. With a name like that, I think it's destined to succeed. So we'll transfer you to the PC, and I'll meet you back in town. I would. I very much would. This has been built up for a... Oh, it doesn't count if it's in the PC. <laughs> Design's best trade interface ever makes it so you can only actually use it in very context-sensitive situations, Game Freak everyone. I guess this way we get to look at Mean Leaf status before we trade it away. Lacks nature, strong-willed, and... Okay, plus defense minus special defense. Not really sure how to feel about that. Again, its starting moves aren't bad, and I guess this way I got to see that my Lillipup had items for me. I got a full heal that I don't need, and an escape rope that I don't need. All around feeling really good. Come on, guys. Where's the Ultra Balls? I know you're capable of doing it. You've done it before. Now let's actually go through with this trade. Wow, thanks. Then let's trade. I'm sorry, I'm very immature, but it's really funny to me that I named it Mean Leaf and it's going to a trainer called Die. <laughs> I know it's a different spelling, but phonetically it sounds kind of funny. Die sent over Fluffy. 
If you don't mind the whole boosted experience thing like I do, where I just kind of feel really weird using it and I don't like that they level up too fast, this in-game trade is excellent for you. Normally, this is a version exclusive to whatever version you are not playing. She gives you the other one, letting you get around that easily. And it will always have a beneficial nature. This is a modest nature, and her pedalil will have that as well. It gets even better, though, in that their IVs will always be 20 across the board, except a 31 in special attack. This is probably your best option, period, for raising those two Pokemon. And not only that, I recommend that you go for this trade anyway, regardless. It's holding a Cherry Berry, which heals Paralysis, which is, I guess, kinda nice. But this Pokemon actually has a purpose for something, and that's why I wanted to grab it. Alright, so... We went into the inner pinwheel forest. We saw lots of great Pokemon just everywhere coming out of our ears, for God's sakes. And we took down Team Plasma yet again, and also got to see a pretty darn cool feature. Next time on Pokemon White version, we're going back into pinwheel forest and seeing if we can make our way to Castilia City, site of our third Pokemon gym battle. We're coming for you, Berg. See you guys then.